With me today, I have Alyssa Wynn, member of cohort one of the Leadership Institute. Hi, Alyssa. Hi. <laughs> so tell us about what you've been doing in your career or school since graduating from the Institute. Uh, so um, after I graduated from Miami in 2014, I moved up to Columbus and worked for um, a small consulting firm uh, called National Engineering. Um, where I worked as a project engineer. And that was mainly, um, I worked with one of my main clients was Chipotle. So I helped with uh, the engineering side of um, the construction of the restaurants from um, all, all across the nation. So that was pretty cool. I got to travel a lot. And um, did you get free food? <laughs> <laughs> I got I got some free food, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, those burrito books came in handy. That's for sure. <laughs> um, they're a great client. I loved working with them. So, um, uh, so I did that for about five years and decided that I wanted to do a career change. And I found a little, and it's, I'm, it's similar, but I'm kind of on the other side. So I was on the consulting side. So then I switched to more of a, um, client side. Um, so I ended up moving to uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and I took a role as a global store designer at Under Armour, and that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks. So going from college to your career, the work, uh, what were some of the biggest obstacles you faced? I think when I first graduated, you, I really struggled with establishing a routine where I had a work-life balance. Um, just because in school, like you kind of had, you know, your tests, your group projects, everything was assigned to you. And with work, like you do have projects that you get assigned. Um, but then afterwards, you know, what do you do? <laughs> I had like a little, I had a little like aha moment where I just came home one day and I was like, you know, I, I really need to establish some kind of routine because I don't have homework right now. So um, just finding hobbies, I think, was a, um, a good outlet just to separate yourself um, from work after work. Because I think that's what keeps you, you know, your mentality healthy and um, being able to live the life that you want. So I picked up some hobbies like learning piano. Um, took some Taekwondo lessons, just working out and um, just staying healthy. And um, since my what last job- you in uh, Taekwondo? <laughs> um, I was almost a black belt before I moved. <laughs> Are you then, still doing it? Uh, no, but I do um, do a lot of kickboxing and um, awesome. doing um, those kind of workout classes. So I still- Sorry like to interrupt. Uh, I'm in uh, Tang Soo Do, so I had to ask. Oh, nice. That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, and so that I mean, those kind of things like helped me escape from work and really gave me that stopping point where like, okay, I need to stop work and take a break and do something mm -hmm. else. Um, and I traveled a lot as well. I traveled probably about like a third of the year, um, just going to different construction sites with my old job. And that really took a toll on me after a couple of years um, working there. And so I started to, you know, trying to look for other opportunities because I knew that wasn't something that I could keep up with um, on the long term. But I think um, that and then also um, another big change was personal finance, just knowing that now you're making money and, you know, how do I utilize and invest my money in the best way possible in order to set myself up um, for financial stability in the long run? So it sounds like you have strategies to help you get through change or unexpected challenges. You do hobbies and you travel and stuff like that. Are there any other um, unexpected changes that you've encountered since you graduated that you're not, you weren't quite sure how to solve, but after employing those techniques, you were able to figure it out? Yeah, so I think the biggest one was I changed my career path. <laughs> um, so obviously I majored in mechanical engineering and then um, I went to work as an engineer. 
And then, you know, through those years that as working as an engineer, I kind of realized like I need to tap into more of my artistic and design side. And it's always been something that's part of me, like since high school. And so I actually took a part-time um, job as like a art assistant at a little workshop. So I helped people create, you know, like wood projects or and art projects and stuff like that. And that kind of helped me remember like how much I really loved art and realizing that I really missed that part. Um, and with the opportunity that I ended up getting at Under Armour, decided to make that career change and take that opportunity um, just to learn and grow um, on the design side and build my resume even more. Um, but yeah, I think that was a big, change for me was going from a technical role to a very business minded and artistic role instead. Um, but so yeah, that's kind of one of the challenges I faced, but I really don't regret the change in the opportunity that I took. So the artistic role that you're in now, uh, looking into the future, what kinds of changes do you anticipate coming in your industry? I think in my industry? Yeah, um, anything in your <laughs> realm. Um, so I know, so my role as a global store designer, um, I really, you know, we take into account how people shop and, you know, how people shop in, you know, you know, online as well as like in person, like at a mall or at a store. And so how do we create an opportunity within the store that will attract consumers to physically come in versus easily ordering online? And so, and with this COVID-19 right now, uh, it's really added at an extra challenge for us, um, especially not wanting to be in close contact with consumers right now and um, customers coming in like do they risk you know do they risk their health coming in or like how do we change the way that we think about retail um, moving forward after this pandemic so that's been a challenge for us and we're still working on it and um, that sounds like a tough one yeah yeah it's it's tough um, you know part of you know we don't want all of our sales to be online but you know what is going to attract people to physically come into the store and what can we implement to keep our customers safe as well as our employees um, and also having um, them to have a job as well what types of uh, strategies and techniques did you learn from the institute specifically to help you get through that i think a lot how to do with my the soft skills that we learned and then also um i don't know if you guys did strengths finder yet and seeing what your strengths we were <laughs> so a lot of my strengths were mostly in the strategic theme as well as the execution theme and so i think for me um, being able to be a more of a futuristic thinker and seeing what is handed to me currently and helping my team to kind of see like what is in the future of retail and how we could solve um, the different issues that will come in the future, just like how um, this pandemic just came on suddenly. Okay, thank you for your time today. Mm -hmm. No problem. It was nice talking to you. All right, thank you.